Sprint cars are insane. They have 650 horsepower V8 strapped to a tiny spindly chassis and the drivers enter the turns at over 110 miles per hour, sliding the back end around the whole way around. Forget Ken Block and his car sliding antics, these guys are the masters of car control. And if they blow it, they've got a concrete wall just a dozen feet away. I'm Alex Lloyd, I finished fourth in the Indy 500, I've tested a Formula One car and I started racing when I was just nine years old. As you can tell, I'm from England, where sprint cars don't exist and are a complete oddity. I live here in the US now, so I figured it's about time I experienced true grassroots US oval track racing. So here we are at Ventura Speedway, where I'm gonna jump into a 650 horsepower sprint car and see what I can do. Back in the day, many of the legends of IndyCar racing cut their teeth in sprint cars. It was, and still is, one of the first steps on the ladder to making it to the world's biggest race, the Indianapolis 500. Guys like AJ Foyt, Mario Andretti, Johnny Rutherford, Parnelli Jones and Alonso Jr. used sprint cars as a training ground to hone their skills. Back then, sprint car was the place you had to race if you wanted to compete in the Indy 500. I figured coming here and doing this would be a little out of my element. An Indy car versus a sprint car is a completely different animal. The driving technique is completely different. So I knew I needed all the help I can get. So I brought in a Sprint Car Hall of Famer, 1985 Indy 500 pole sitter, who goes by the name of Poncho Carter. Drove Indy cars for a long time, but basically I started out in uh, what Alex is going to try today. So I've always been a firm believer that if you can drive a midget, you know, on dirt and pavement stuff, you can drive any kind of race car there is in the world. Driving on dirt is about getting it sideways, but getting it to go straight again as soon as you can go down the straightaway. It's all about throttle control, and you use the brake just to help not so much slow it down, but to change direction of it a little bit. Sprint cars can either be winged or non-winged. I'd be driving a non-winged sprint car, which simply meant I would have less downforce and therefore less grip than if I was in a winged car. So calming the beast would be far more challenging. On a sprint car, the rear tires are also much larger and wider than the fronts, especially the right rear, which is simply massive. This is all with an aim to help the car turn left and slide around the bends. We have staggered tires on an oval in an Indy car, but we're talking more like millimeters rather than the inches seen here on the sprint car. Sprint cars are often around 650 horsepower, but you can get them to as high as 800. What's crazy is these cars only weigh around 1,000 pounds giving them one of the highest power to weight ratios of any car. A 230 mile per hour Indy car, for example, has about the same 650 ponies, but they weigh around 1600 pounds. And let me tell you, an Indy car is, unsurprisingly, insanely fast. So how will this miniature missile of a sprint car be when utilizing its mind-blowing speed on dirt? So when you're in an open wheel car, you sat back, your, your arms are here and your feet are stretched out way in front of you, you almost lay down. Here, the pedals are directly underneath you, so you, your feet are upright and the pedals are run underneath and you effectively push down on the throttle and you push forward for the brake, so a very different feel. This will be Alex's first experience on dirt. Usually you take somebody that, you know, was a little less experienced and try to, you know, guide him the right direction. Now you got somebody who's pretty experienced who probably has a lot of bad habits for doing this. So you're gonna have to break a lot of these bad habits to, to get him to, to drive on the dirt like he should. So uh, it's gonna be a challenge, it's gonna be fun. It looks great fun. In the Indy car, it's all about precision. You place the car on that same minuscule patch of pavement every lap. But here, they get to hang it out, manhandling the car into the turn. It's art versus science. I'm intrigued by this, but honestly, I'm kind of terrified because I'd really prefer not to kill myself. My first few laps in a sprint car, while it may look slow and boring from the outside, to me felt completely bizarre. I knew I was going really slowly, but whenever I went into the turn harder, the car just went straight and understeered at the racetrack. I couldn't go any faster and I immediately realised I had a long road ahead of me if I was going to get to grips with this by the end of the day. Alright, you got the engine warm now. <laughs> Now's the time to go fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's like, it's like literally a different sport. 
Like I, I get in and I just don't know what the hell I'm doing. It feels so like my actual hands are hurting, even at those slow speeds from like the vibrations, I guess. You're, hang, you're hanging on too tight. I, I probably L am. A little softer grip. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but my natural reaction is turn the wheel in, turn it through the corner, but these things don't, don't do, do that. Yeah. So then you go. That's going to be the toughest thing to break you from is that. But I think once you first start getting a feel on how to set it into the corner, and then it'll take you a little bit to figure out how to modulate the throttle and stuff to get it to keep sliding sideways, yeah. but it'll come to, and you'll find out that. Uh, You'll be going a lot faster through the corners. I mean, right now, probably about the slowest you've ever run any kind yeah. of race car. And you, and you probably didn't feel like you could go much faster. No. Yeah. After a talk with the experts, I realized that these cars will simply not turn unless you get the back end looping around you on entry. To do that, I had to stab the brake to set the car into a drift. And once in that slide, control it via the throttle. The steering is simply a means to balance it all, but it's the brake and throttle control that I needed to master. As I started to get a feel for steering the car with my feet and not with my hands, my confidence began to rise. But as is usually the case when this happens, it was inevitable that something was about to go wrong. Having been knocked down a peg or two with my little spin, I was eager to make this final run count. Poncho had told me that in sprint cars it's not about drifting all the way around the turn as I thought it was, it's merely doing all that sliding initially on corner entry so you could drive off the turn as straight and as fast as possible. So with that etched into my brain, I gave it a final go. I began to feel like a real sprint car driver. The technique was making sense even if I was still having trouble executing it every time. But what you can't see at this is the smile beaming from ear to ear under my helmet. This was what I came in for, not to set any lap records, but to experience something as truly awesome as this. The hardest part for me during all of this was letting the car slide from underneath me. Imagine you're on an icy road and the back end starts to come around. Your natural reaction is to turn into the slide and catch it, but in a sprint car you just can't do that. You have to keep the wheels straight and let the back swing around you until it feels like you're about to head backwards into the wall. But my reactions kept preventing me from allowing the car to slide sufficiently so I could drive hard out of the turn. Once I finally tricked my brain into ignoring what comes naturally, I kind of managed to get the hang of it, but it felt so unnatural. When you get it just right, it feels magical. Your hands, feet and eyes seem to align and you can control the car in the most effortless fashion. It might not look it, but from behind the wheel it feels almost graceful. There's so much technique involved in sprint car racing that even I didn't necessarily realise, even though I was under the impression there would be a lot, that it, it makes it very, very challenging. And as I said, from racing since I was age 9 all the way up to now being 27 and having raced every year, week in, week out, Coming into this, I just felt completely out of my element. I wasn't quite sure how he'd handle that with his background and stuff, all rear engine type stuff. And uh, but he he did a good job. He did uh, did a real good job. I think a little more practice, and maybe yeah. we throw him in, let him run the Chili Bowl, which is probably the midget race. It's the Indy 500 of the midgets. After a day of driving, trying to figure out how to handle a sprint car and channeling all my racing experience into making that happen, I came away with a newfound appreciation for what these drivers go through. It's now evidently clear to me why all my heroes chose sprint cars as the path to the Indy 500. The driving style required to drive a sprint car fast is a far cry from what it requires to drive an Indy car. But maybe that's what today's Indy car drivers are missing. Perhaps understanding how to hurl a car around a dirt oval and come out the other side could help today's superstars be tomorrow's Indy 500 legends. Ruin my my fancy race suit, but again, I don't care. I come away with a smile on my face and that's all I wanted to come away with from this. Until next time, I'm Alex Lloyd.